What I wanted to um, speak tonight, I, I hope it's going to be an encouragement to all of us. Um, first of all, we can't please God without faith. I think we can all agree about that. Life, God calls us to do life by faith, not through sight, right? Walk by faith and not through sight. And I think that's, that's significant to our life uh, and our walk with Jesus Christ. Um, but what I wanted to talk about tonight, and if, if I could encourage all of us, or at least to bring a focus to, is the battles, the battles that occur in our minds, and that eventually, if, if we lose those battles, basically they come out in our, through our behaviors, our character, and, and so forth. But I'm thinking about these battles that, that are raged against us from the enemy, the devil, in our lives, from as early as young children, uh, they occur and they happen. Um, but they are serious, and the devil doesn't care whether we are aware of what's going on in our minds or whether, you know, we, we don't know. If you're an unbeliever, obviously you don't know and you don't care. Uh, but as believers, um, I believe the Holy Spirit brings it to awareness as to what's going on into our minds. And as real as the battles, as we see on the forefront of, in reality, right, we see the war in Israel and what's happening at Gaza, right, as, as, as you see those missiles flying in, that's exactly what the enemy does to us through our thoughts. And he sends arrows to us, right? And if we're not aware of what's, what's coming into our minds, uh, eventually it destroys us. Uh, it hurts us spiritually, if you will. And so the Apostle Paul uh, reminds us of this in Ephesians 6.12, what that looks like. So it says, it reads, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. I mean, we would be fooling ourselves if we think that what we think and what comes into our minds does not affect who we are as Christians. And so as, I mean, let me give you an example. As, as a, let's say a child, right? you're in the classroom and you're always told how maybe not smart you are and then you come home and your siblings do the same thing and then all, all in a sudden all, this creates a pathway in, in our minds and eventually we become Christians and we come to the Lord by God's grace and there's this trench in there and the enemy has a pathway that he'll come and he'll just remind us oh you're not that smart oh you're not that smart right just continue just bombarding you and then you wonder why as, as Christians, we don't have that power, that strength to be able to do more for the Lord because we have this entrenchment in, in which God calls us to use the word of God to break those down. God says, take every word captive. In other words, every thought, anything that comes into our minds that's foreign or that is harsh or, or disabling to us, God says, take that and bring it to the word of God. So if, so if you've been told you're not smart, and this is just minimal, right? This is small. Take that. When you're sitting down at your work, you take that thought and you bring it to the word of God and you say, I am created in God's image. I have the wisdom of Christ. I have the Holy Spirit in me that leads me. Get behind me, Satan. Don't let that thought pierce you and continue to do it because you... We just won't be able to thrive spiritually in Jesus Christ. And so the Apostle Paul reminds us that our battles are not merely physical. They're not. Or earthly in nature. We are engaged in spiritual warfare and understanding this truth can bring great encouragement and strength to our hearts. Listen, if we don't know that there's something behind. So you have a fallout with a friend, let's say. That's not always the result of your friend not being a good friend. That There's a spiritual component to that that happens, and you have that fallout. And so what do we do? Do we 
Do we become, oh, how I can't believe my friend did this to me. Do we become upset? Do we be, right? Or can we better yet be encouraged to pray? Man, she must have been having a bad day. Or man, he must have been having a bad day. I don't know what happened. You know, try to come to some consensus. Try to come back and try to, to be the light of Christ in that relationship. Doesn't mean you're going to be friends again or you're going to have a close relationship. But at least instead of being bitter or angry or what have you, all, all the other things, you pray. You understand that there's a spirit that's not... I'm, Praise God. So perspective is key in our life. I mean, to, to understand that there is, as the Apostle Paul tells us, we are fighting against principalities and powers that are behind the scenes of, the, of our lives and, and in this world. So perspective is key. So the first point, I guess, if you will, we can draw from this verse as a shift in perspective. When we face challenges conflicts or difficulties it's easy to focus on a human aspect of the problem but Paul reminds us that the root of these struggles often lie in spirit in a spiritual realms this perspective shift helps us to realize that we are not alone and God is with us in this battle. So God understands. He knows. He wants to bring that to the forefront. The word of God tells us constantly to be aware, right? Don't, you know, be aware what you look at. Be aware what you listen to. Be aware who you hang out with. Be aware of the, because we all get influence. And so significantly and important, the more we're not paying attention to what's coming into our minds, eventually it's going to make our hearts sick. Okay, and I, I, I mean, sometimes I think, why am I anxious at times at work? Why am I depressed at times at the end of the week or what have you? It's because thoughts that are coming into my mind and that I'm not being aware of because I get so busy in work or I just, oh, it's nothing. I just, you know, I just ignore it. But eventually it hurts our hearts. It hurts us as individuals, as believers in Jesus Christ. And God says, take every thought captive take every word captive to the word of God and pay attention to what's coming into our minds number two identify the real enemy the real enemy is not me or you it's not our friend it's not our boss it's not our neighbor the real enemy is Satan because he works to, to bring strife he works to, to bring discontentment he works to do anything that would take our peace away in our relationships away. So understand the enemy by recognizing that our true enemy is not your boss, is not the neighbors, not the people, is not the lawyers, is not the people around us. Uh, basically, we can avoid bitterness, we can avoid resentment and anger towards these people. Like as I mentioned before, instead of having resentment, we pray and we take some time to pray. We can see that they too may be influenced or oppressed by a spiritual force of evil. And this understanding can lead us to a greater compassion and desire to pray for their well-being. And as I mentioned, isn't it better instead of being bitter or resentful against somebody for something they've done to us to, to rather think, man, they must, something must be going on with them. I should, I should pray, Right? Uh, instead of getting back at them or instead of causing strife, right? Just playing the enemy's game. We do God's game and God's will is peace, search for peace, find peace, do anything that, even in controversy, find peace. Amongst God, find some peace, common ground, pray. Number three, put on the armor of God, man. My goodness, the armor of God. God's given this to us and I'm so thankful for it because for many years I, I, I didn't know about that I just knew about love love one another and just do good and just seek peace and but man God gives us and he explains it to us Ephesians 6 10 the apostle verse uh, uh, chapter 6 verse 10 through 18 it goes on and it talks about the the armor of God and so and so it's the belt of truth right protect your minds don't let the enemy bring in half-truths in our minds. 
It's key. There's, there's no relative truth. There's truth and there's a lie. There's, you know, God says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Anything beyond that is, is evil or is not good. And so the belt of truth, the word of God, right? We, it, when, we, when we are attacked by the enemy, understand the truth of God, right? Understand who God is in our lives. Let the word of God reign in us. Then you have the breastplate of righteousness. We need to understand that, that we are righteous in Christ. Though we are being sanctified in this life, we're being sanctified each and every day. Though this is true, and we fail and we fall short of the glory of God, we fall short in honoring God, right, in his righteousness. God says, you are righteous. The God the Father looks at us through his son, Jesus Christ. He says, you're righteous, but we have work to do. Walk in me, walk by faith, be sanctified, get the armor of God. Don't let the enemy tell you you're a worthless piece of nothing and that you've fallen and look at you and what are you. Get up, tell the enemy behind me. I'm righteous in Jesus Christ, not because of what I've done, but what he's done for me. And I will get up and I will find forgiveness. I will find uh, Jesus Christ in, the, in that moment and in that situation and I will continue my fight for righteousness in Jesus Christ breastplate of righteousness we are righteous in Christ not by what we do but by what Christ does for us the shoes of peace the gospel of peace we have to understand that when the enemy hits us fight back don't let him steal your peace use the word of God to stand on his word the shield of faith protect yourself don't let those thoughts penetrate. I mean, if there's addictions or what have you, don't let them penetrate. As soon as they penetrate our minds, we fall into, the next thing is behavior. And then we fall into that sin. Protect yourself. Use the shield of faith. Let faith, by faith, we please God. Through faith, um, we honor God. Put on the helmet of salvation. Uh, salvation. We, are si we are safe through Christ. He's given us salvation through death, burial, and resurrection. If he never resurrected, we, it would be terrible with us. But he resurrected and there's proof and, and, and we believe that in faith and, and history shows it. He raised from the death, from the grave. And then we have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Right, Jesus Christ himself used that when he was tempted in the wilderness. We need to know, we need to study the word of God. And one way we can study the word of God, I've always, how do you meditate on the word of God? Usually it's reading a verse. Let it sit in your mind. Bring it back forth. Read it again. Think about it. And do it again several times. Um, and that's how it begins to to. to penetrate our minds and get into our minds and then eventually into the heart use the word of God in your battles don't let the enemy tear you down because we are ineffective we're ineffective in the church if, if that happens and we're ineffective in the in the world and so I would encourage us to to find time to study the word of God it's significant to our spiritual well-being and so putting on this armor doesn't uh, uh, daily is essential for our spiritual well-being, as I mentioned, and protection in battle. Nobody goes to battle without some sort of, of, of an armor. And so it's significant to our, the spirit, it's significant to our spiritual well-being. Prayer and vigilance, it's another tool, another tool that, that Christ has given us to pray for one another, to lift each other up in prayer because we need to support each other. We're, we're our family and, and, and the family of God and, and it's just, we're called to do that. So prayer and vigilance. So while we're doing that, we're keeping our minds filled with the goodness of God. We're keeping our minds filled with, with, with the word of God which empowers us into his holiness, into his goodness, into peace, into joy, into winning our battle so philippians 4 8 9 says finally brothers and sisters whatever is true we could do this in prayer whatever is true whatever is noble whatever is right 
whatever is pure, whatever is holy, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such thing. Think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. And so we have examples in the word of God with, with the apostle Paul and Peter and, and, and the apostles and the disciples uh, walking in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. We should take note of that and uh, keep the word of God on our minds. So engaging in prayer, staying vigilant are crucial components of the spiritual warfare. Prayer connects us with God's strength and wisdom while vigilance helps us recognize when spiritual battles are at, are at hand. And so prayer helps us to win the battle. Vigilance gives us awareness, hey, there's, there's something wrong. It's the red light. Be ready. Watch out for that thought. Watch out for that behavior that's going to come next. Remember, prayer is not a sign of weakness, but a demonstration of our relationship with Jesus Christ and his power in us. And so a prayer life is significant to our winning the battles in our minds. And we have to understand that it, it, we need to be aware of that, I would say, and I can't say it enough. Number five, community that will help us in this battle. We have a community of believers, right? Uh, to help us to, to you know, pray for each other, to encourage each other, to, to help us win these battles. If we're losing our battles, we should have accountability groups or grow groups. And I think we're working on that. Where we do life together and we understand what, what our challenges are, we understand what our hurts are, and we pray for each other, we fast for each other, and we do life together. We are not meant to fight the battle alone. We're not. God leads us into battle Right? We have our brothers and sisters who we can do, you know, battle against the enemy through prayer and community. So being a part of a community of like-minded believers can provide strength, encouragement, and accountability. Together we can stand against the schemes and the storms of the enemy. We're not meant to isolate. We're meant to do life together. We're meant to build each other up. Number six, victory is promised. So though the battles rage in our minds, we need to understand and have the perspective that victory is promised. God's given us victory. And we need to, we need to believe that as Brother Chris was saying, believe it through faith. He's promised us victory and walk in that victory. If you've fallen, get up and walk in the victory that Jesus Christ has given you and don't fall in that Temptation or in that sin. So victory is promised. While we face spiritual battles, we must rem remember that victory is assured for those who put their trust in Jesus Christ. Romans 8.37 says, No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him, Jesus Christ, who loved us. God has already won the ultimate victory. He has death, burial, resurrection. He resurrected. He took the keys of death. He has won, and he's given us life. God has already won the ultimate victory, and we share in that triumph through our faith in Jesus Christ. We can't please God without faith, and so we walk in faith. And even in our battles that we endure, we do them through faith and trust that Jesus Christ is leading us into victory. Number seven, endurance and perseverance. The battle is ongoing and there will be moments of weariness. Hey, I get, to, I'm tired. Many times I'm tired. You know, I, I, I have just about 25 years of, of walking with Jesus Christ and I'm tired. Many times I look around I look around me, I look at the world, and it's, it's, I'm just, God, I'm just tired. There's sin everywhere. There's sin in my workplace. There's sin in the world. There's, there's sin everywhere. 
It's like every place I turn, there's sin, and I'm just, give me victory. Help me, Lord God, for this heaviness. Take away the burden. But remember, Galatians 6, 9, let us not become weary in doing good. And so sometimes I feel, I get so tired. What is, what is my good going to do anything? What, the good that I do, how is it going to impact anybody? But God says, keep doing what you're doing through faith in Jesus Christ. Don't give up. We're, don't, don't be weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest. We do not, uh, we, will reach a, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. God calls us, don't give up. Keep fighting the good fight. If, you're, if, if we are tired in our fight, don't give up. Trust in the Lord Jesus. Keep walking. Get up. Remember the armor of God that he's given to us and continue to take the battles on that the enemy throws at us. And then number eight, and then the last one, we'll, we'll, get, we'll, we'll rise to our feet and uh, go into prayer. God's power is greater than our own power. He's great. His power is greater than the enemy. I believe in my, in my faith that God has the enemy of our souls on a, on a leash. He cannot just go about doing what he wants to do. He does cause lots of trouble in the world, 100% true. But I believe when it comes to the church of God, the enemy just can't go roaming around and just tearing everybody up. It, it, he's limited to what he can do. And so I'm encouraged about that. I mean, I can do life and I can honor God and, and praise him and not be afraid. Of what, of what the enemy can do to me because he can't do anything outside of God's knowing and knowledge. So no matter how daunting the spiritual battles may seem, always remember that God's power is infinitely greater. Ephesians 3.20 says, it reminds us that God can do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. If we, if, 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 if the battles are raging in our minds and we're failing and we're falling and we get discouraged, get down in prayer and ask the Lord for help. He will help you. Get into a community. Get into accountability. He will help you. He will give you. He will give me. And he will give us the power to overcome. Trust in the Lord Jesus. Trust in his power and don't underestimate what he can accomplish through you. If we can rise to our feet, so we can go into this next prayer. Uh, in closing, Ephesians 6, 12 reminds us that we are part of a greater spiritual narrative, as, I've, as I was talking about. When challenges arise, we are equipped with the armor of God. We are equipped with the armor of God. We have the support of the church, a community that we can help each other up, keep each other up in prayer. And the promise of ultimate victory. I mean, I know I have victory in Christ. He's given it to me, but he asked me. Until the end, he's sanctifying me, and he's given me victory through the power um, of, of his hand and the Holy Spirit. Let this truth, this encouragement, uh, encourage you in your daily walk. Let it encourage us in our daily walks. Understand that we have the people around us, the church. We have the armor of God, and we have victory in Christ Jesus. We can face the spiritual battles of life with faith, hope, and assurance in God, in God's presence and his power. And so God tells us that if God is for us, Think about this, this truth. If God is for us, who can be against us? I mean, think about the power of that. If we, we can accomplish anything through faith in Jesus Christ. As Chris was saying earlier, if we had faith as a mustard seed, you can tell this mountain to move from here to there. That's incredible what God is saying that we can do. Um, the idea is the power that is in faith, you know, uh, th that if we want healing, if we can, if we believe it and, and God gives us that, that anointing of, of faith and, and that belief, healing can occur. 
because it moves the hand of God. And so I would like us if in this next prayer, if we could be thankful that, we, that we're not alone. I mean, really, we're not alone in our fight, in our spiritual fight that, that, that's happening in our minds. Um, we're not alone. The, the believers and the disciples and the apostles, they all had it before us. And, and they're teaching us and they're telling us what we need to do. But to be thankful that we're not alone and just praise God. You know, just thank God that we have a way out. He never tempts us or allows temptation more than what we can handle. And let's be thankful about that, that we have the armor of God, that we have the community of God, the church around us, and that he's promised us victory. Um, with that, I, I don't know if anyone, anybody else or in the church wants to express verbally a, a petition they want to bring before the Lord and that the church could, could support them. In prayer? If not by the raise of hands, do we have any petition before the Lord that we can pray? I right, praise the Lord. Yeah, God hears us. I, I believe that He sees every hand, He knows every thought, He knows our prayers, He knows our needs, He knows our concerns, He knows what we need. Um, if we come in, if we can come into this next prayer and just just be in tuned, uh, focus on God, and try to make a connection. It's a battle in itself to pray, and and prayer worship is awesome. For me, my the worship is my prayer. You know, it's like I love it. I just I make it my prayer. You know, when I worship. But sometimes when we express it, it's a way to to communicate with God. We should be empowered we should be what's the word um energized right to to talk to our father and then to, to wait and, and see if he speaks back to us in our hearts and our minds but let's go into this next prayer just to be thankful for what he's done for us thankful for what he's doing for us the victory he's given to us the family of, of believers and 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 just bring him glory let's do this in jesus name